This is 25-year-old Korean model Jung-Hoo Lee. Recently, Lee has models for Louis Vuitton, GQ, and McLaren. Oh yeah, this guy also plays baseball. You know what? He's pretty good at it. Good enough to sign a 6-year, $113 million contract with the San Francisco Giants to be their center fielder of the present and future. Handsome. <laughs> The son of Korean baseball legend Jung Bum Lee, who was known as the son of the wind for his iconic speed, Jung Hoo has been dubbed the grandson of the wind, which is one of the coldest nicknames I've ever heard. The grandson of the wind is an absolute superstar in Korean baseball. As part of their elaborate cheer culture, Lee has his very own chant which the whole stadium collectively screams. He also has his own cheer song, with an official studio version. Additionally, you can also find him appearing on Korean TV shows with his father. <laughs> Lee idolized Ichiro Suzuki from a young age, hence his choice to wear number 51. And while there is no one that can compare to Ichiro, he is of a similar mold, just without some of the baseball legend's special skills like his cannon arm and pinpoint precision while bunting. What that leaves is an outfielder with an uncanny ability to make contact and also good speed. Lee rode his elite hit tool to a 340 career average as a Kiwum hero in the KBO and an MVP award. Despite that, the general reaction among the American media following his six-year deal with San Francisco was that the Giants overpaid for a very risky player. I could not disagree more. At 25, Lee is an MLB star in the making, and this isn't the first time that he's been doubted. Entering the KBO at age 18, Lee wasn't considered the most physically gifted player. Still, the then Nexum now Kiwum Heroes snagged him fourth overall, and he quickly proved any doubters wrong. In his pro debut, Lee hit 324 while setting a rookie record with 179 hits. What followed were six seasons of excellence, in which Lee asserted himself as one of Korea's best all around players. That included a 2022 MVP season, in which he hit 349 with 23 homers and 113 RBI. In that same year, Lee drew 66 walks while striking out 32 times. Getting Lee to K is exceedingly difficult. With a 97% in zone contact rate in Korea, it was nearly impossible to get Lee to swing and miss at a pitch in the zone. Even if you got him to swing at a pitch outside the zone, something he is very comfortable doing, he made it very hard to get a pitch past his bat. While Lee will face tougher pitching in MLB, foreign hitters with bat-to-ball skills as good as his do fare typically well. Take the hitting god that was Ichiro, who required little to no adjustment period as he won the AL MVP in his first MLB season. As NPB pitching is above the level of KBO, and once again Ichiro was just a completely different beast, initial success like that is not expected from Lee. However, it's not just people like me yapping on the internet about how Lee is going to be a great hitter. Every projection model on the Fangraphs website has a pretty similar and very positive outlook on what they project for his rookie season. An average in the 285 to 291 range, an OBP in the 346 to 354 range, a slugging in the 416 to 433 range, and a WRC plus of around 110 to 116. That means Lee would be about 10 to 16% above average at generating runs for the Giants. This is a great WRC plus at first glance, and it looks like a vow of extreme confidence once you consider Lee's situation. Firstly, this is his first season adjusting to MLB pitching, coming from the KBO, which is thought to be at a level between AA and AAA. Secondly, these hopeful projections come after ha Sung Kim, the last player to come over from Korea struggled mightily in his rookie season despite KBO stardom, posting a WRC plus of just 71 in his debut season. The following year, Padres manager Bob Melvin entrusted Kim with a full season of playing time to adjust to MLB pitching and improve, and he did so in a big way, increasing his WRC Plus to an above average 106. Coincidentally, Jung Hoo Lee's manager with the Giants will also be Bob Melvin, so you know he's going to get every chance to prove himself. Ha Sung Kim improved even more for his third season, posting a 112 WRC Plus last year and flourishing as one of baseball's best fielders. It took Kim three seasons to post a WRC Plus that falls within the range Lee is projected to hit in his very first year. It's hard to expect Lee to improve as much as Kim has in the years that followed his debut, but if he's able to start from such a higher place than Kim because of his amazing contact skills and improve at even half the rate Kim was able to, Lee could be giving Luis Arias a good fight for the batting title every year. There are things working both for and against Lee in his transition to MLB. All the time you'll hear people mention the jump in the velocity he'll be facing, as well as the movement in the pitches, and that is a valid concern. With that being said, MLB games won't be the first time Lee's faced hard-throwing MLB quality pitchers. 
everything available on Lee facing non-KBO pitching is very small sample size, but he did star for Korea in the World Baseball Classic, where he faced off against Team Japan in the Tokyo Dome. There, Lee took two at-bats against Yu Darvish, going one for two with an RBI single that he smacked off of a fastball. New Chicago Cubs starter Shota Imanaga relieved Darvish, and Lee greeted him with a double. That double came off a 95mph fastball, a very hard one to hit if you know anything about Shota Imanaga. Against new San Diego Padres reliever Yuki Matsui, Lee smashed another fastball, this one resulting in a line out to center. He also faced Yoshinobu Yamamoto back in 2021, going two for three off of him including a double he roped off the right field wall. Still, despite this small sample size success against Japanese pitchers, it's fair to expect his adjustment to harder and nastier pitching to take a while, and we might see some uncharacteristically high swing and miss numbers early on. Once he settles in though, hopefully faster than ha -Sung Kim was able to, Lee should be able to go back to hitting in the 300s. And not everything is working against him in his move to MLB. Something working in his favor is MLB's shift restrictions. Lee was the second most shifted on player in the KBO, being shifted on for 55% of his balls put in play. In Korea, up, unlike in America, teams can shift more than two infielders over to one side of the infield. With Lee being a ground ball hitter who tends to pull the ball, teams like to utilize shifts where there would be three guys on the right side of the infield against Lee, something he'll never have to deal with as a giant. What Jung Hoo Lee's game lacks the most is certainly power. While he was able to slug 23 home runs during his 2022 MVP year in Korea, he only hit double digit home runs one other time, and did so exclusively by pulling the ball. Well, Lee hits lefty, and when he pulls the ball to right field in San Francisco's Oracle Park, he's going to have to destroy it to hit a home run. Out there in Triple's Alley, it's 421 feet to right center. While that might kill Lee's home run numbers at home, he's instead going to be dropping a lot of balls into the gap, and could find himself near the league lead in triples if he can pound that right center field gap very often. That large outfield is also something he's going to have to deal with as a center fielder. While he's not the elite defender his World Baseball Classic teammate ha -Sung Kim is, Lee will bring good speed and athleticism to Oracle Park's huge outfield. He's not much more than average in center right now, but that's something that can be improved. Even if he doesn't become a great defender out there, center field is a weak position in Major League Baseball, and a guy who's at least average and can put the ball in play frequently is very valuable, especially for a team like the Giants. San Francisco had the 7th most strikeouts in MLB last year, so adding a contact machine like Lee to get on base in front of productive hitters like Wilmer Flores, Lamont Wade Jr., and the team's newly added sluggers Jorge Soler and Matt Chapman is a refreshing addition to a whiff-heavy offense. The Giants Giants also aren't a team with many particularly flashy or super exciting players, and on top of his actual skills, Lee brings excitement, flair, and hustle to the game, which most fans will really appreciate. Here's him sprinting out the box on a no doubt spring training home run, he crushed 418 feet. Here's him spiking the hell out of a bat. So from Lee's elite contact ability to having his own personal cheer song, he is simply very exciting, he has all the makings of an MLB star, and he would love it if you left a like on this video and subscribed if you're new to Llama Baseball. Thank you guys for watching if you have made it this far, and I will see you in the next one.